Hey everybody, and welcome back to more Pokemon Soul Silver. Mom, stop calling me! I just want a gym battle. I want to enjoy it, have a nice night on the town, and not worry about you calling me all the time. Mom's, huh? But on today's episode of Pokemon Soul Silver, well, I didn't do last episode. Last time, we beat Whitney and her infamous, terrible, stupid bitch mill tank. <laughs> And today, we're gonna be heading on to the next city, which is Ecruteak City, but for now, we have a package from our mom, and we got Chopal Berries. I don't remember what they do, if I'm being completely honest, I'll put a tag up here, and hopefully that'll explain it for you. Um, but, like I said earlier, we uh, beat Whitney, and today we're gonna be heading towards the next town. Um, so, first off, what we need to do is we need to head to the flower shop, because... As I brought up, I believe in episode 8, there is a lady there who will give us an item that will help us get a tree out of the way that is obviously in the way we need to get rid of it. Um, I actually really like what she's going to give us when she does, but you have to make sure when you do this, you have the plane badge from Whitney. You, it's the only way you can access it. It's to keep you from going to the next gym, basically, is the way. Um, but we get the squirt bottle, and the squirt bottle, if you look at it, is... Obviously, as soon as you see, it resembles a Squirtle, and I really like that a lot, because as you know, and should know because it's a fact, basically, a Squirtle is the best Gen 1 starter, so, yeah. I've always liked Squirtle, I don't know why, but I'm just, even as a kid, I, I did like Charmander, but even then I knew Squirtle is the best. Maybe because he's blue, I don't know. Also, this music is so good. But yeah, this is the global Wi-Fi terminal. I admittedly cannot use this. This was kind of used a lot for doing uh, online battles, online trading, stuff like that. It was a big online community, and that's something I think Gen 4, for me, why I loved it so much, is because Gen 4 is when I got to learn, and I think for a lot of people in the same way, is when uh, a lot of people got into competitive because we get online, and you could play online with people, and you would constantly run into guard chomps. But I... I have a lot of fond memories of Gen 4, and admittedly the online function is a big part of that because this is when I really got into Pokemon, because I loved playing online with people, because, just being honest, growing up, I didn't really have a lot of friends who played Pokemon. I had a cousin who'd play it, but he wasn't, like, big into, like, really playing online. I loved it, and I was never, like, great at online, but I knew how to play a decent competitive match online, so, yeah. This guy here actually gives us a piece of mail, and he wants to take us on Route 31, but when he does it, we're actually getting a Spearow with it, which is pretty cool. You actually never have to give the mail to his friend. You can just keep the Spearow and have a free Spearow, basically. I believe the Spearow is level 20, so by the time I think you evolve it once, you're pretty much getting a free Fero if you want it. And Fero's a good Pokemon, especially flying type. Uh, it can learn Drill Peck pretty fast, and Drill Peck's a really good flying type move. I recommend it a lot. I I like Fero. I prefer the Pidgey and or Pidgeot line really, but Fero is not bad if you want a good flying type. Admittedly, you can always go and catch a Hoot Hoot or a Noctowl, I guess, but I don't know. This old pick's gonna be annoying as well because it has Will O' Wisp. So Will O' Wisp has a hard chance of hitting you, but if it can, it's an automatic burn, and that sucks because burn is one of the most uh, annoying, I'd argue, status elements you can get put on you because it's just constantly burning you each turn like a poison does. I don't know if burn hurts more though. I've never really checked on that, but it would make sense. I feel like burn should hurt more because I feel like I'd rather be poisoned than be set on fire, but that's just me. But we have... Oh, I know this isn't a double battle. I was supposed to say, is this a double battle? But it's not. There are a few double battles. I know, I think we've seen one already in the LP, but I do like that they added double battles a little bit during this game. I know, um, I have a friend who hates double battles, and I get... I think for him it's because it's more busy compared to just a regular one-on-one, -on -one. but see, I like that about double battles. I think there's a weird thing... Because Gen 5 introduced the triple battle and the rotation battle, and then Gen 6 would do like the flying battle stuff and the hordes, and I hate- well, I think the hordes was Gen 7, but 
I think double battles is the only good, like, new Pokemon battle type they ever brought in that was actually fun. Because I don't like triple battles. I just think there's too much going on. And it's really awkward trying to hit different people. And rotation battles are just... Con and they're confusing, but I feel like they just drag on far too long. Double battles are, I think, the best because you really gotta do a lot of strategy with it, when you especially if you're playing, like, a competitive match. I love double battles. I... I don't want to do a whole game of double battles. Thank you, XD Guild Artists and Coliseum. But still, double battles are really fun. And that's a lot of online talking about that with the global Wi-Fi terminal. I did a lot of double battles. I would definitely do single, uh, but double battles is always more interesting to me. I think they're the more. Uh, if you've ever watched like uh, I can't think of what they're called now, like the Pokemon like Grand Championships, whatever they're called, World Tournament, whatever they are. The the thing where they had that Pachirisu win, which was a big meme. Um, those are awesome, because they'll do, like, double battle sets, stuff like that. And my emulator glitched out. <laughs> that happens a lot. <laughs> Missing no stroke again, you know? But, uh, yeah, I do like double battles a lot. And it's Pikachu. I don't know if we've seen a Pikachu yet, but this is a female Pikachu. And obviously you can tell because of the, uh, symbol up there. But the always the way I remember you can tell a female Pikachu compared to a boy one is a female Pikachu's tail will make a heart at the end of it, compared to like the little zigzag thing it kind of does. And this Pikachu has double team, making it really annoying. I remember talking about playing online, double team was such an issue uh, playing back in the day because people would just spam double team over and over and over again. And I admittedly, if I ever catch a Pikachu or Raichu, I always make sure to teach a double team. I admittedly considered using a Pikachu in this LP. I've done a couple of playthroughs of Soul Silver where I've used Pikachu in the Raichu line, but I have to be honest here. Ever since I've played Gen 7 and I got a Lolan Raichu, I cannot go back to regular Raichu. I've tried, and I just, I can't do it. I don't know why. I think because a Lolan Raichu is just so much better, because it can learn electric type attacks and psychic, and I, I actually prefer the regular Raichu design, but I still, in terms of, like, moveset and, like, stat stuff, oh my god, Alolan Raichu's so good. That's saying Alolan Raichu design's bad, by the way. I love Alolan Raichu, but I just prefer the original Raichu design. Here we go, good old Magmar. Magmar is a pure fire type. I brought up in a couple episodes ago, but Magmar in this game actually got, well, in Gen 2 really, got a uh, pre-evolution with the baby Pokemon, uh, Magby. Magby's not good, but Magmar is actually quite good. A cool thing about just, or these remakes, since it's Gen 4, is um, you can actually access Magmar's evolution that was brought in Diamond and Pearl, Magmortar. And Magmortar is not bad, it's actually pretty good. I prefer Electivire, since... They both kind of got the evolutions, but Magmortar can be quite good. I believe Magmortar is, I want to say Fire Steel, but I might be wrong on that. I've used the Magmortar before, and I've, oh, I've used Magmar as well. They're pretty good Pokemon. That one had a Smoke Screen. Smoke Screen's really good for effectiveness. It can learn a lot of really good Fire type moves like Flamethrower, uh, Fire Blast, stuff like that. I can recommend Magmar. It's pretty good. It's one of, uh, I'd argue it's a really underrated Gen 1 Pokemon design. I don't ever really hear people talk much about Magmar. Electabuzz I do, but Magmar not that much. Obviously, Electabuzz also got a pre-evolution with the big Pokemon in this game. Well, not in this game, but like in Gen 2 with Elekid. I actually prefer Elekid over uh, Magby, but they're still really cool. It also has Faint Attack. I forgot about that. Faint Attack's a pretty decent dark type move. It completely just destroyed my Flaffy. This Magmore is pretty good, I have to say. I want to say Magmore has the ability... I want to think it's Heat Body? I think if you hit it, you can get burned, I think. I could be wrong on that, though. I can't, it's either Heat Body or Flame Body, or I'm completely wrong on both. I probably shouldn't have really used Heracross there, since it's a bug type, and Magmore's Fire can easily destroy it, but I wanted to be risky and try and just take it out really fast. Having Aerial Ace on Heracross is a really big, uh, well, not big, but it's a really good move for Heracross because it can never miss, and with that, I can usually take out a lot of fighting types, which comes in handy. 
and other bug types as well, I might add, so. With Heracross, I think it's kind of good to have um, a pretty diverse moveset, so, like, I try to always give it, like, a fighting-type move, usually Aerial Lace if I can, um, a bug move. There's one in particular that makes Heracross really good. Stuff like that. And here's another Pokemon I really can recommend here that's Nidoran. You can also catch, uh, Nidor... What's the boy called again? The male version of Nidoran. I can't think of its name. The one that evolves into Nido King, you can catch those here, and I can't stress this enough, I heavily, heavily debated on catching one, because I love Nido King a lot. Nido Queen's also good, but I am a Nido King person, because Nido King is a Chad, and I like the Chad Pokemon. But, if you can get one, it's gonna take time to get it, but Nido King is poison ground, and it can wreck shit. Very good. If I didn't have another Pokemon later on that I'm going to catch, I was actually really debating on using Nidoking, because I, I just, I love Nidoking so much. Here we go. Thank God, Heracross is learning Brick Break. I, this is the move I wanted to teach you before I fought Whitney, but I was kind of worried I made that fight a little too easy. Brick Break's a fighting type move, and honest to God, this is probably going to stay on Heracross until the end of the LP. <laughs> Brick Break's a really good move. If you use it, you can break your Reflect, a Light Screen, stuff like that. It's a very good move. So, like, now we've pretty much just... Our Heracross is pretty much set for the rest of the game until we get one more move. Heracross won't be changing that much, which can sound bad, but, like, I, I can... I kind of brought this up um, when I caught Heracross. But Heracross is really good for this game. He's good for any game, really, but in this game in particular, he's very good. I admittedly didn't even really want to use Heracross uh, when I first decided that I wanted to LP in this game because I thought it would be too easy and then I was like I found one just kind of randomly like the original plan being honest with you while when I was recording the episode when I caught Heracross was not even to use Heracross I was honestly just debating to see if I could actually pull it on off and get it because Heracross is quite rare and I said all right if I catch a Heracross I'll use it and I ended up finding one on the third try so I was like well this is a sign I have to use Heracross and here's Abra Abra, if you can catch an Abra, you're quite lucky, because Abra, you will use Teleport on the first turn it can, and Abra, obviously, is a Psychic type and will evolve later on to Alakazam, which Alakazam's really good. However, as you see here, Abra will use Teleport to escape. If you have Quick Balls, I recommend chucking them at Abra if you want one. The Alakazam family uh, Pokemon is really good, would get better in Gen 6 to get a Mavga evolution, but... I do like the Abra line a lot. Abra does take a bit of time to get good because you, you're not really going to have a whole lot to work with until you evolve into Kadabra, but it's still quite good. I believe it was Kadabra that just recently got the um, okay to, like, they can make Pokemon cards for it now because of that lawsuit, which is kind of cool. Uh, it's been a couple months ago now, but it's still insane. Like, it's been like 20 something years and it just now happened. I didn't even know that was a thing, but admittedly, I am not a big. Uh, Pokemon card guy, even though I know now people are, like, fighting over Happy Meals and stuff for him at the time of recording. Um, so yeah. I actually know a guy who went and bought 20 Happy Meals just to get Pokemon cards, which is insane. I think it's, like, the Pikachu and it's really rare or something? I don't know. But yeah, we need to go up to this tree and hit it with a Squirt Bottle. Well, not hit it with a Squirt Bottle, but, like, use the Squirt Bottle on it, because this tree is blocking the road. Obviously, for some weird reason, squirting water on a tree makes it, you know, be good. I don't know how that works. The Autry attacked! And here we go. Level 20, Suda Wudo. Sudowoodo is the mysterious tree Pokemon. It's a rock-type Pokemon. It's obviously based off of a tree. Sudowoodo is okay. It's not really something I personally use, but I have a friend who actually not really likes Sudowoodo a lot. It relies mainly on defense, and it can actually learn some decent physical attacks, but defense and physical attack is really where its strong suit's at. It has a lot of weaknesses due to its type. The rock type is kind of hard to use in Johto, admittedly, because you're going to be fighting a lot of ground and fighting and steel and water and grass types, which are good against Sudowoodo, so definitely be careful on that. But design-wise, I do like Sudowoodo a lot. 
In Gen 4, though, uh, Sudowoodo would get an evolution or a pre-evolution in Bond's Lie. It, I think it technically made its first appearance in Pokemon X Gala Darkness, but I could be wrong on that. And it's obviously a Pokemon you can get in Super Smash Bros. Brawl to throw at other Pokemon. Or other Pokemon, other characters, really. And this person gives us a berry pot. We can actually put our berries in this pot and they'll grow, so we can constantly be growing uh, berry slime. This is a pretty useful item, and I will be trying to use it. It won't be on stream, but I'll be using it off screen quite a bit. So if you want it, I do recommend using it quite a bit. But the show will be telling us to head to Ecritique City. But I still have no more talk to. Uh, most people, obviously, you're going to know uh, Sudowoodo from Brock, Sudowoodo in the anime, because he caught it as a bonsai and evolved. And yeah. I don't know. I like Sudowoodo a lot, but it's a pretty cool little tree Pokemon, I guess. It's a trick or a tree. I don't know. But yeah. <laughs> I hope you guys join me next time for more Pokemon Soul Silver, as we're going to be heading on to more, or well, farther on into Ecritique City. See you guys next time.